Hey everyone, it's Kyle and this week I'm going to be showing you how to make an intelligent acceleration program that you can control with motor rotations. Today I'm going to be showing you a smart acceleration program that will be especially useful for FLL participants. The acceleration program that I demonstrated on my channel in the past used time to exit the function, which would make it kind of unpredictable if you start adjusting the acceleration. However, today a viewer shared with me a new way to do that acceleration program that is instead controlled by rotations instead of time. So you can customize the acceleration, things like start speed, end speed, and rate of acceleration. However, you set a rotation amount, and no matter what's happening with the acceleration, the robot will always drive that rotation amount, which means you can program a consistent distance but still customize the acceleration, which is really awesome, especially if you're in a robot competition like FLL or WRL. The program that I'm showcasing in this week's video was created by a viewer on my channel named Bendik Skarpness. Bendik is from Norway and formerly a part of FLL Team Gozen. Bendik saw some of my videos and was inspired to create even cooler versions of my programs. And so big thanks to Bendik for providing these programs to me so I can share them with you today. Now it's time for a programming walkthrough of this acceleration function. Right here it's in my block form which streamlines all of the parameters right in front of you so you can easily adjust them without having to go into the programming itself. If you'd like to learn more about my blocks and setting up parameters, I have a separate tutorial which covers that and you can click on that right up here in the top right corner to watch that. But anyway, getting back to the acceleration, I'm going to go over what each of the parameters do. So the first one is called forward backward and this is for robots that um, may drive in an opposite direction like for example my Sirius robot drives forward when you give it negative power and that's what this variable is for so this will flip around the acceleration so then it always accelerates in the positive direction or if you want to go in reverse uh, you can use that too so for example my robot Sirius drives forward with negative power so I would choose false and robots with normal orientation would choose true and then also you could use that to change the direction of the acceleration if you want to go forward or backward. The next variable is called steering. Some of these uh, parameters are still named in Norwegian, but thankfully I can translate them for you. So the steering works just like the regular steering on your average everyday move steering my block. So it works uh, exactly the same way where zero is directly straight ahead. A positive value means steering to the right, and then a negative value means steering to the left. The next one is called maximum speed, and this is the target motor power that the robot is going to try to reach at the end of its acceleration. So this should be a higher value, and that's eventually what your robot is going to work its way up to. This is a time value, also called latency, and this is the amount of time in seconds that the robot will wait in between acceleration increments. And this works similarly to my own acceleration program, which I covered in a previous video. This is how you adjust the rate of acceleration. So increasing this value will make the robot accelerate more slowly because it's waiting a little bit longer in between acceleration increments. This one is the rotation target, so this you can set to uh, any number of rotations and the robot will drive and accelerate over that many rotations and this is independent of any latency or any speeds you choose so if the robot reaches its maximum speed before the rotation target it'll drive at that maximum speed until it reaches that rotation target which is pretty awesome because no matter what it always stays within that same rotation distance now just a little note if you choose to drive in reverse which is false you're going to need to make sure that your rotation target is a negative number otherwise the program won't work and if you select true then this should be a positive number and then finally we have speed which is the initial speed that your robot starts at and this should be a lower magnitude than your maximum speed of course because you're trying to ramp up your power from the starting speed to the maximum target speed now let's open up this my block and see what kind of programming is inside so you can see here this is where all the parameters are being read off of the my block and the first thing it does is store all of them into variables of the same name so that they can be used later in the program then it's going to reset the rotation count on motor B's rotation sensor and it does this so it can get an accurate estimate of how far motor B has 
rotated so it can keep you within that rotation count that you defined earlier. This is one of the really awesome features of this acceleration program because it always makes the robot drive a consistent distance even though you're accelerating and it's regardless of how quick the acceleration is or what speeds you're starting and ending at. Next it moves into this loop and this is where the actual acceleration happens. So first it reads the motor's current speed and then compares it to the maximum speed that you defined earlier. So if the current speed is less than the maximum, uh, then there's more room to go in terms of increasing the speed, and the program will do just that. So it takes that value of speed, increases it by one, and saves it as the new value for the motor speed. If the speed variable happens to be equal to the maximum, then it'll execute this no case, this false case, and it won't adjust the speed at all. It'll just maintain that robot's maximum speed until it reaches the degree limit. Again, going back to what we said before, how this acceleration program allows you to program a specific distance regardless of whatever else is happening with the acceleration. Next, we're going to apply those desired speed and steering settings to the robot's driving. So it reads your selection for forward backward and it's that logic, so then it executes either the true case or the false case depending on what you've done and they're pretty much the same so the true case reads the speed which we calculated before and it increases each time to make the acceleration effect and it also reads the desired steering value that you selected while you're setting up the my block parameters and it applies them to a move steering block to get the robot to move the false case is pretty much the same thing except instead it multiplies the speed value by negative one so the robot drives in the opposite direction next we have this step which is called the latency and this it reads your latency value that you defined before and makes the robot wait for that number of seconds as i mentioned before this is the amount of time that the robot waits in between each ex individual speed increment between each time the robot accelerates and this is how you control the rate of acceleration so if you make this latency variable bigger it'll wait more time in between each acceleration and it'll slow down the rate of acceleration so it'll take more time for the robot to reach its maximum speed then it's going to go into a step that simply monitors the speed so it reads the current speed and prints it to the EV3 display for debugging purposes the final step is it's going to check the number of degrees on motor B to see if it's reached the degree target that you defined before and it again uses that forward backward because if you're moving in reverse then you're going to be accumulating a negative degree value so it compares the number of rotations on motor B uh, to the number of maximum rotations that you define the robot to drive and if this returns true then it's going to interrupt this loop and allow you to move on to whatever programming that you've placed afterwards and again this is the same thing just mirrored so you can drive in reverse let's see this acceleration program in action the really awesome thing about this program is that whatever you set the starting and ending speed to be or whatever you set the rate of acceleration to this program will always drive the desired number of rotations that you set it to which makes it really awesome for FLL because you can set it to drive a consistent distance no matter what the acceleration is doing Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, click here to check out my new book. It's called Building Smart LEGO Mindstorm EV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, drop your suggestion in the comments section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.